My name is Lucy, and this is Author Spotlight, the show on AADL TV, where each episode I take a little time to focus on the works of one author. The author that I will be talking about today is a woman named Yi Yun Li. Yi Yun Li was born in 1972 in Beijing, along with her parents and one sister. She lived in Beijing through college in 1991. She completed her year of service in the Chinese army and then she went to college. She received her bachelor's degree in science from Peking University and was headed towards becoming an immunologist. In 1996, she moved to the United States to study immunology at the University of Iowa. And that is where she took her first writing class as a way to improve her English and she found herself writing fiction. She changed the focus of her studies. Yi Yun Lee has written short stories. She's written novels. She's written essays and books of nonfiction, a memoir. She's quite a prolific writer. She also has won the Penn Hemingway Award, the Guardian First Book Award, the Penn Jean Stein Award. She's been a MacArthur Fellow. She's had a Guggenheim Fellowship. So she's widely recognized for her talent. The first book that she published was a book of short stories in 2005. And then she wrote her first novel called Vagrants, which was published in 2009. I'm just gonna talk about a few of her novels today and a little bit about her memoir and tell you how I came to begin reading the works of Yi Yun Lee. Lee published a book in 2022, it was a novel called The Book of Goose, and it got a lot of attention. It ended up winning the Penn Faulkner Award. And when I read it, I was immediately drawn towards the story and the writing, and I really wanted to read more of this author's work. This was her fifth novel, and it is a story of a passionate friendship in rural France shortly after the Second World War. The two girls are named Agnes and Fabienne. Their relationship is intense. The story is a little bit strange, but that is one of the things that makes it so mesmerizing. The book is narrated from the point of view of Agnes. It's narrated at a later point in time, in fact, after Fabian has died and Agnes finally feels she can tell the true story. Agnes goes to school. She is a very good student. Fabienne does not go to school. She's a goat herd, but she is a very gifted storyteller. She is unable to write because she's been taken out of school, her mother has died and she has to keep house as well as keep the goats. So together, Agnes and Fabienne start concocting these stories that are pretty violent. A young mother who feeds her newborn baby to pigs, a man who has a sexual relationship with a cow. The stories are unexpected and strange and at the same time, draw the attention of the postmaster in their town, this widowed man. And so his reasons for paying attention to this book of stories and to these girls is somewhat questionable. But in any case, he sends the stories on to a publisher. This publisher in Paris thinks this is an amazing work by this girl, this peasant who must be a prodigy. And Fabian gets no recognition. So it's this story of this literary hoax. The reason that Agnes goes along with this whole story is that she is a little bit obsessed with Fabian. She will do anything that Fabian tells her. Because of Agnes's celebrity and her supposed prodigy, she moves to Paris to write another book and she's taken under the wing of this woman and sort of goes to this finishing school. She thinks it's a school where she's gonna get an education, but it's a finishing school so that she can become educated in the ways of society. And at this time, Fabian writes letters to her, both as Fabian and Fabian's imaginary brother, who is supposed to be Agnes's boyfriend. This story has so many layers. The interesting thing about the letters is that they're very different. They sound very different. They have different voices. In fact, the two siblings talk about each other, even though one of the siblings is made up. And it's almost as if Agnes can't remember that there aren't actually two people. Because we're getting this story from Agnes's point of view after sometime after their childhood, we have to remember that we're getting this, these refracted pieces of memory because we're just getting Agnes telling her story. Going forward, I realized how much memory plays a part in many other of Lee's books. One of the things that I really liked about this book is the sort of subversive nature of the friendship of these girls. It was messy. It was 
uncomfortable. There are pieces in the story about sadness and anger and grief that a lot of girls in books are not allowed to feel. And when I finished it, I realized that I immediately wanted to read more. I decided to turn to Lee's first novel, Vagrants, which was written in 2009. This book is completely different from The Book of Goose. It takes place in China in the late 1970s. So this is right at the time of the Beijing Democratic Wall Movement. I didn't know much about this time in history in China, and I learned a lot of history from this book. The Great Wall Movement was this anti-communist movement that was hoping to move China out of the shadow in a way that was begun with the Cultural Revolution. And this whole series of events is leading up to the Tiananmen Square uprising. That is not part of the story. The story takes place in a very small village called Muddy River. And the book introduces us to various characters in this village. We get parts of all of their stories and how they come together. The book begins on a day when one of the women in the village is scheduled to be executed. She has renounced her faith in communism. Her name is Gushan. Gushan's parents also live in this village and they are two of the characters that we follow. Her parents are experiencing her execution in different ways. Her father, a man called Teacher, Teacher Wu, has already, in his mind, seen her executed and is ready to move on. Her mother wants to follow traditional customs around grief and mourning, and she wants to burn her child's clothes to ease her into the next world. So they are already at odds when this book starts out. The entire village is gathering at different points at these ceremonies called denunciation ceremonies. It is required that they go to them. So the whole village is in fact sort of celebrating this execution. And that's where the book starts. And we meet the characters as they're going to their various denunciation ceremonies because the execution happens in the beginning of the book. We learn how far reaching the effects of this execution are in the village of Muddy River, but even beyond the village. After the execution, leaflets start circulating and people start to hear about this democratic wall, a place where they can air their grievances and minds start to become shifted and changed. The characters in the story are very eccentric, very interesting. There is a seven-year-old boy named Tong. He's very serious. He's very devoted to his dog named Ear. There is a disabled girl named Nini who has many sisters and will never marry because of her disability. She's sort of cast aside and relegated to take care of her parents. One of the things she does is collect coal for her family, but the way she does this is she has to follow around the person selling coal and just pick up pieces that he has dropped as scrap. There's a man named Bashi who is sort of a do-nothing. He has strange obsessions about people and he becomes connected to Nini in various ways. Uh, there's a woman named Kai who is the news announcer and so the whole town knows her voice because there's only one source of getting news. She's married to a powerful man from a rich family. There's a couple who are trash collectors, but they also have over their lifetime adopted a series of daughters. And part of their story is going back and reflecting on what those daughters might be doing now. They eventually had to marry off each daughter in order to be able to stay alive. So everyone in this village is really getting by on scraps. The book is at times difficult to read just because of the lives that these characters live and the difficulties that they face, the oppression, the grief that they're going through, the treatment that some of them receive, but there's also this rebellion and this belief that some of them have and these acts of courage you see in a lot of different characters in very unexpected ways. Each one of the characters was so fully realized that that was part of why I was drawn into the story and again, just mesmerized by the writing. And though this book was so different from the Book of Goose, I knew that I had discovered this writer whose works I really wanted to read more of. Then I turned to a novel called Where Reason Ends. And this is a book that Yi Yun Lee wrote in a very short period of time. I think she wrote the whole thing in about a month and it was published in 2019. The novel is very different from the other two books and really different from any piece of fiction that I've read. It takes place in the form of this extended conversation between the narrator, who is an author and a teacher, but also a mother, and her son, who she calls Nikolai. She tells us that's not his real name. Nikolai has recently died. 
And so the whole book takes place in really, we suppose the imagination of the narrator, but also sort of this space between life and whatever it is that might come after life. As the narrator says, a place called nowhere. The rule is somewhere tomorrow and somewhere yesterday, but never somewhere today. When Yi Yun Lee wrote this book, she was actually in the middle of writing another novel called Must I Go, which was about a woman reflecting back on her life, much like Agnes in the Book of Goose, but that woman in that book had a child who ended her own life. At the time of writing that book, Yi Yun Lee's son ended his life. And so she was unable to keep writing the story that she was writing and she stopped everything. And she wrote this book, this conversation between this mother and this son. It actually has some humor in it. Both characters, the mother and the son are obsessed with language and words. Her son loves adjectives. The narrator has no use for adjectives. She loves nouns. And the way they banter back and forth about the other's use of the English language can be very funny. It's very smart. It is a beautiful book. It's deeply sad to think about why this book was created and what it really is about. It also is sort of this look at what happens when there is no language or there's something that transcends language. I was blown away by this book. As I said before, I haven't read anything really like it and it just indicated to me that this woman, Yi Yun Lee, can write across such a wide breadth of subject matter. Then I turned to read some of her memoir, which is called Dear Friend From My Life, I Write to You In Your Life. This was published in 2017. So before Where Reason Ends, before Must I Go. And it was really interesting to read this because I saw a lot of the themes that came up in the fiction that I'd read in pieces of Lee's memoir and, and things that she discussed in there. It's not that her fiction is autobiographical at all. She's very firm on that point, but I think it's a good example of how an author can be working on something or puzzling over something, ideas and thoughts in their own life and how that can be realized in different ways in different stories. She talks a lot about memory and the fallacy of memory and what you can really rely on as being real. She talks a lot about time and the slipperiness of time. And as she delves into these things in her memoir, I was reminded of places where I'd seen that in the fiction that I read. She says, our memories tell us more about now than then. Doubtless the past is real. There's no shortage of evidence, photos, journals, letters, old suitcases, but we choose to discard from an abundance of evidence what suits us at the moment. There are many ways to carry the past with us, to romanticize it, to invalidate it, to furnish it with revised or entirely fictionalized memories. The present does not surrender so easily to manipulation. That reminded me of, of both the Book of Goose where I was getting this story that was really memories that someone chose, the evidence that Agnes was showing us in the moment. And then this idea of writing from the present, like how can you actually do that? And maybe the closest thing is a book like Where Reason Ends which takes place in a space that doesn't really adhere to time. There is a lot that Lee had to say about time. One of the things I thought was very interesting is she says that time is both intrusive and elusive. It does not leave us alone, even in our most private moments. In every thought and feeling about life, time claims a space. When we speak of indecision, we are willing to let go of a present. When we speak of moving on, what a triumphant phrase, we are cutting off the past. And if one seeks kindness, from time, it slips away tauntingly or worse with indifference. How many of us have said that to others or to ourselves, if only I had a bit more time? One more thing that does come up in this memoir is the idea of being a dreamer and how some people are dreamers and some people are not. For Yi Yun Lee, she did not want to be called a dreamer because of what she thought it was based on what she'd learned in Beijing. When I read the novel called Must I Go, which I actually read sort of in tandem with the memoir, I saw this idea of dreamers and non-dreamers coming up again and again, and it was really central to that story. I read an interview with Yi Yun Lee. One of the things she said is that she works really hard to be subversive in her writing. And part of being subversive is for her not to follow the narratives that are most convenient. And some of this might make readers uncomfortable, 
but it also makes you work hard when you read her books and it's worth it. It's certainly rewarding to spend time with this sharp mind. The subject matter is not really ever very happy, but I think it's important sometimes to have an author who can be a voice for people who aren't feeling happy. And she's been called a, and I, this is a quote, beacon for readers in mourning. And I think that's because she shows the uncomfortable sides of grief, the messiness of relationships and life, and things that are not always widely discussed. There's so much more in the books that I read of hers. She has also written many more essays for publications, short stories, another novel that I didn't read yet. So I have more to delve into, but I also have a lot to chew on with just what I have read of hers. So if you are looking for a challenging author, you want to read some different stories, I would recommend the books of Yi Yun Lee. Thanks for joining me.